Good morning and welcome back to another Hot Take Tuesday, the Tuesday edition of the Teacher's Wake Up Call. I'm your host, Madame La Prof. Mm. And I hope your coffee is nice and strong. This morning's hot take, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the World Cup. I'm going to talk about the World Cup because I noticed a couple of people posting on, uh, on the various social media platforms uh, that Canada did not deserve to be at the World Cup. So, so let me use another country. Did Greece deserve to be there? No, well, Greece isn't there because they didn't beat the teams they needed to beat to qualify. Canada beat the teams they had to beat to qualify to be part of the World Cup. Hence, they deserve to be at the World Cup. Let's take another country, for example. Italy. Like people who know me, they know that I like to, to, to pick on Italy. They are a good national team. I recognize that uh, and, and I, I will acknowledge that. But they did not qualify. They did not beat the teams they had to beat to win a spot at the World Cup. So don't tell me that Canada did not deserve to be there. Was I cheering my little heart out when they scored that first goal, apparently the fastest goal ever in a World Cup uh, competition? Did I cheer? Did I scream? You bet I did. You know, I was proud. I was proud. Did I cry? Did I cringe? I did not finish, finish watching the game. No, because it was painful. It was painful. It was like, okay, I'm turning this off because I, 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 I. Yes, they disintegrated. Yes, the defense was horrible. Yes, communication was horrible. I'm going to say the same thing that I tell my, my volleyball girls. I'm, I'm the unofficial um, cheerleader slash teacher rep for the volley, girls' volleyball team. Um, what's important? Communication. Communication, communication. They, you need to communicate. And, and they all weren't communicating. They, they, they weren't. So am I looking forward to Thursday's game against Morocco? Absolutely. I am going to be watching it. I'm probably going to stop my teaching, put the game on, and watch. It's going to happen. And, and, and I know for a fact. I know for a fact that other teachers are going to be doing the same. Maybe not in this school probably in this school, but elsewhere too. Um, parentheses, tangent, sidebar. Um, I am convinced, I am convinced um, that there's a secret international association of high school students that went up to FIFA with their own set of, of bribery tactics. I'm betting they went to see FIFA and said, we know, we know you're trying to sell like the whole, we're going to be playing in November in Qatar because it's going to be too hot in the summer. Play in November, guys, because you are going to disrupt every single high school student's regular, uh, regularly scheduled day of, of learning and teachers are going to have to stop teaching just so we can watch the World Cup. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Yes, yes, yes. There has been scandal upon scandal, bribery upon bribery uh, surrounding the World Cup. But I'm sure, I'm sure there was an international student association that, that had their own, their own little talk with FIFA and say, do it in November. Do it in November for us. We're your future clientele, okay? But uh, that's not my hot take. That was just a, an amusing little story that I was telling myself to uh, justify <laughs> the incredible disruptions that are happening in class right now. Um, no, my hot take has to do with an article that was published earlier this week, probably Sunday or yesterday, 
about how uh, there are uh, an inordinate amount of high school students who are dropping out to work. Now, um, dropouts um, is not a new phenomenon. Dropping out was was something that that was around for many years, decades even, um, and and the fact that they are talking about it now, um, in light of of statistics and data showing that there's an incredible lack of of uh, workers in the province, maybe in the country even, I don't want to speak about other provinces, um, goes to show you that there are more and more high school students who are choosing to drop out to work and work full time. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to work a couple of hours and play video games for the rest of the week. No, they are actually dropping out to work full time. And what does the ministry want to do? Find ways to bring them back to school so they can go to CJEP. Because, curiously enough, the, the, the rate of students signing up for CJEP, um, parentheses for those who are not from the province of Quebec, CJEP is a uh, two-year program after grade 11 to prepare students to go to university. Close parentheses. Um, so these students... Um, who are dropping out are not signing up for CJEP and the ministry is going ah it's the second consecutive year that the number of students signing up for CJEP has gone down why are you pushing them to go to CJEP they dropped out of high school because they thought it was boring and you're gonna push this on them my hot take is that stop pushing higher education for those who clearly are not interested. They're not, they're not. Yeah, yeah. They were spending six, seven hours in class sitting and they thought it was boring. And you think college is going to be more interesting. Now, I'm not saying that, that higher education is not um, a, worthy, a worthy path to choose after high school. I am not saying that. Um, I'm just saying that and I mentioned in another video, we're trying to push it on everyone. And not everyone has the interest, <laughs> the interest to go into higher education. As, as if a trade and developing skills isn't, isn't a worthy path. I'm just saying, with the lack of workers and employers that we have, and, and especially in trades nowadays, maybe it would be an interesting thing to consider a work-study program for those. And I'm not talking about those who are um, at risk of failing, because there are work-study programs that exist for students who cannot graduate. Like, no, it's, it's not going to happen but we need to have a work study program for those who do have the skills to graduate, but are not interested because CJEP and higher education is not meaningful to them. Now, it doesn't mean that they will never turn to higher education. And, and, and the ministry has to stop thinking about um, students picking a path, a career, in grade 11 when they're 17 years old and expect them to stick to that career for the next 50 years, all right? It, 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 that's not reality. That's not reality. Reality is you might have to change paths eventually. You might have to retrain. If you are a tradesman, you might quite possibly have to retrain and, 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 and find another path, and that's okay. The impression that I'm getting from the ministry is that any other path other than CJEP and university is not worthy. So instead of trying to figure out a way, how can we bring back these kids in so they can graduate and go to CJEP, how can we answer their needs and what are those needs? And clearly, if they're going to work 
we are not doing our job to, to meeting those needs. So, and yes, I fully agree. Making money is a very important need, especially in this day and age. So why are high school students doing this? And, and we're talking young high school, school students. Like there, there were kids who were 13 years old with part-time jobs this summer. They've tasted, they've tasted making money and, and they know how it is. So if we want them back in class, it has to be meaningful to them. So on that lovely note, folks, have yourselves a lovely, lovely Tuesday. I will see you around.